Let me just start off with what you are actually constructive on, because even as we see Japanese equities taking a bit of a breather, the Nikkei has seen, what, 12 consecutive days or 12 out of 13 days, what we've seen gains. You are still pretty positive on Japan. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as, as, you, as you mentioned, Japanese equities have performed quite strongly since start of the year. But we think that there is more upside over the next 12 to 24 months. So, you know, if you think about the, the recent uh, string of corporate reforms that have happened, improvement in corporate governance, we think that will lead to further, uh, you know, share buybacks from Japanese corporates, and that should be positive. And, as, and secondly, we think that, you know, markets may be underestimating the earnings potential for Japanese equities. I mean, just last quarter, we saw real GDP growth in Japan being uh, around 6%. And you, when you add the inflation, which is quite elevated, we are looking at 9% nominal growth in Japan. So we think there is more earnings upside to Japanese corporates as well. And both of them should, should drive Japanese equities higher on a 12 to 18 month horizon. You've got a couple of contrarian market views, and I'll start off the one, uh, you know, on China because it's 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 not easy to find anyone who's sort of more positive on the broader outlook, even in the short to medium term. But you think on a 12-month horizon, would you be at this point adding to that portfolio in, in terms of the value that you can see in Chinese stocks right now? Well, uh, that's that's a, that's a there's the million dollar question, right? So at the moment, we think it makes <laughs> sense to right size the sector allocation within China. So you know, we think that. Uh, allocating more to sectors which should benefit from government stimulus, so sectors such as consumer discretionary and com consumers uh, and communication services make sense. But yes, on a 12-month horizon, you know, we would be looking to uh, add more to Chinese equities because if you think about it, valuations are quite cheap, uh, earnings growth is still in double digits, and if you know, the, the government stimulus does manage to improve investor sentiment, then we could see you know, uh, more investor flows coming in, and we all know that uh, you know, international investors are quite underweight Chinese equities. So, you know, it may take time to see a, a decisive turnaround, but you think, we think that on a 12 to 18 month horizon, Chinese equities do have a high probability of outperforming global equities. But Avalash, foreign investors, even when they have jumped into China in recent, really, years at this point, they don't stay very long. They're not really willing to live with that kind of risk. Yeah, and, and that just shows in the foreign investor positioning, right? We've seen a substantial amount of outflows uh, from, from Chinese equities. Uh, and, you know, you can look at it uh, in a glass half empty or half full manner. So from our perspective, you know, once that sentiment turns around, there is room for uh, international investors to, you know, cover some of those underweights, even if they don't go overweight, even if they cover those underweights, that could lead to, you know, substantial inflows into the market and, and you know, lead to a, a bounce higher. Avalash, how much, if any, of this positioning that you talk of has to do with the weaker currencies? If they were to strengthen either you know, through central bank policy or other means, if the dollar were to suddenly weaken, for example, or next year if the Fed cuts rates and that sort of royals currency markets again, would you still hold the same positions? Uh, so, you know, uh, dollar uh, bearishness is, is one of our key calls. So we think that the recent strength that we have seen in dollar, it, it's starting to look overdone. And, you know, it's, it's, on, it's on the back of U.S. exceptionalism over the past couple of months. But we all know by definition that exceptionalism in, in U.S. doesn't last very, very long. So we think that if you look at, you know, signs of, uh, you know, job market weakness, they are coming through. In fact, the Beige Book report that came through uh, overnight, uh, we saw that companies are expecting wage growth to, to ease. Uh, so we think that you know dollar should weaken uh, heading into into the 2024 and that's why we think you know allocating more to asian equities as well as asian bonds makes a lot of sense for investors at the moment